Welcome to the OHP Uncut Podcast. My name is Cannon. Please subscribe to the podcast so you can get the new, raw, uncut, unedited interviews that we post every Wednesday. Today, the creator of classics we're going to be dancing to pretty much for the rest of our lives, if I had to guess, Nelly. He's got a new country-inspired project out. We talk a little bit about that, but I also wanted to get into the classics that we all know and love and kind of get his take on like what memories those songs remind him of. You know how when you hear a song, you remember exactly where you were when you were listening to that song. I wondered what that was like for the man that created those songs, Nelly. Songs like Hot in Here, Country Grammar, Ride With Me. What do they mean to Nelly? He's going to tell us today in his own words. And we're going to get some secrets about some of those throwbacks that I never knew. It's an honor to have you today. Let's get it with Nelly and the OHP Uncut Podcast. By the way, subscribe. The OHP Uncut Podcast with Cannon. I guess they're rolling, so uh, I guess we can go here. Uh, pleasure to have you, man. I, I think I speak for everyone when I say that it is a uh, it's a blessing to have you still be relevant uh, in so many ways. But I, I guess the first thing you got to ask, I mean, you've been doing it so long. What what keeps you motivated? What are you doing it for? Because obviously you don't need the money. Um, it, you're, there's got to be something about it that still is a fire burning inside of you for, for some part of this. What is it? Um, well, first of all, thank you, man. I appreciate the the words, bro. Thank you. Um, yeah. And it is a blessing for me to, to still be wanted after, uh, after so long, you know, definitely after 20 years of doing anything, you know, anytime you can continue to, um, still be relevant and, and make, make things that people want to hear. Um, I, I, I don't know, bro. You know, I, I, I just, um, kind of give more of the credit to to the fans that 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 helped make me the ones that grew up with me uh the ones that I continue to touch in some way shape or form or fashion but I think just as an artist period I mean when you get into this business I don't know if you get into it when you get into it you can see the end I I, you know what I mean like I, I I don't think anybody sees the end and I don't think the end is about money at all I mean you know, uh, Dr. Dre and Jay-Z, I don't know, if Puff, I don't know if anybody has more money than them right now, but they continue to s- still be in this game and continue to still make their presence felt um, and continuously doing music in some sort or some shape or fashion. But I think for me, it, it's, uh, I love doing it. I truly love doing it. Um, I miss not being on tour. I miss not being able to touch the fans. I miss not being able to get out in front of there and have that, that rush of being on the stage. You know, um, it's like a drug, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I did see, I think energy. you do have some dates coming up though, don't you? I mean, yeah, but it's, 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 it, it, they're so sporadic. I'm talking yeah. about that continuous, the tour, the, the excitement of the tour, not the excitement of not, I think as you do shows now, you're kind of unsure about how they're going to go. Yeah. You just don't know. And they're different. You know, you're not reaching out, touching the fans as much. The fans have to be so far back from the stage and nobody can be as close. And that's like not what you got in it for. You know, you got you got into the music and into doing shows for the exact opposite reason. Yeah. Because you love the fans being right there. You love reaching out. You love the energy of everybody being as close as possible and, and you vibing off of it. So, I mean, again, man, you know, um, but it's what every artist is going through. So it's not like it's happening to me. It's nothing personal. It's happening to the game. So we have to find ways of getting around that and continuously uh, to do what we love. It looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, though, man. When's the last yeah. time you were on a stage? Um, I actually have been doing a little spot spots here and there, but there've been more or less private parties. Uh, we recently, about a week ago, week and a half ago, we just did uh, a guy's birthday party down in Palm Beach, um, and you know, it was it was it was really dope, some guy. Again, it was just some guy. Uh, well, I mean, you know, I don't put everybody's business out there. It was a private right. party. <laughs> right. Some guy with a, a lot of party. money. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some guy with a whole lot of money, <laughs> you know, have you done like some of those shows for super rich people? Like, you know, people like in Saudi Arabia, princes and shit like that. I hear they yeah, get, like, we've done that. We've done that before. We haven't, we haven't done, them done them recently. recently. Yeah. Not recently, but we've definitely done them before. Um, uh, yeah, man. Birthday parties. And that. I tell you what, what, what used to be like very, very profitable was like bar mitzvahs. 
Mm. Used to get a lot of lot of rich bar mitzvahs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, like I, I get several of them. A lot of them in New York too. A lot of them was in New York uh, back in the day and in the early Nelly days. It was just like, you know, quick, quick, two, three, four hundred thousand. Like, like for one, for a thirteen-year-old party, you kind of like you're spoiled like, brat, <laughs> but you love him. Oh man, I love him. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Tell me, man, what is it with you in country music, man? Because you got the, the, the song with Florida Georgia Line. It's the second time around, you know, doing something with them. But it's not a one-off, man. You've had Tim McGraw and yep. uh, who else? Kane Brown. I mean, the list goes on and on for you. And there's sort of a, a, a relationship with you in country music that's kind of yeah. uh, good, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, first of all, I, 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 I love country music. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I feel honored and blessed that they allow me to to – to be at the dinner, you know, so to speak, like, like if your country music was having a, having a dinner and they only let in certain people who they appreciate, you know, I feel like I, I, I would get invited. Yeah. You, you know, never see at the table. I, yeah. I may, yeah. Yeah. Maybe not at the main table, but I definitely will be in the room. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, which is, which is a blessing for me, but also, um, you know, um, I was born in Texas, but St. Yeah. Louis raised me. St. Mm -hmm. Louis raised me. I'm a Midwest boy. I'm a heartland kid. Uh, yeah. Show me state bread. And, you know, if you're from Missouri, it's a huge, huge music scene, but also a huge country music scene. And it's one of those things where, you know, I wanted to be a bridge, man. I wanted to be that bridge between between what I do and, and, and country music, so to speak. So I was able to, to able to reach out to several different people and, and show them that I had love for what they were doing and maybe we could come together. And that's been going through through my music just since the beginning, man. And um, I got turned on country music through my uncle, who's no longer here, may he rest in peace, but he turned me on to Lionel Richie and which Lionel Richie actually turned me on to country music because he was he was writing for the gambler Kenny Rogers. Oh wow! And, I, didn't really, I totally yeah, forgot about that connection. Yeah, he wrote a lot. He wrote a lot of music for for a lot of different people, and Kenny Rogers was one of the one. And Kenny Rogers was actually my first introduction <laughs> into country music. You know what I'm saying? I used to love the gambler, so uh, it was just one of those situations where you know you start digging deep, digging deep, and then as you get older, you get turned on to more people. Hank Williams, George Strait. Uh, you know, uh, Shania Twain, Garth Brooks, you just continue to go. My homie, Tim McGraw, all the way Thomas Rhett, all the way up to now and things like that. And, and you just find out, man, that the music is very, very similar to a lot of the music that I grew up in, grew up with as far as the stories and the passion. Now the music may be a little different, but the passion in the music and the stories was all the same. I want to, get to the new album that you're doing. But first, I want to take a little trip down memory lane because nothing brings back memories like hearing a song, man. And I know that like when I think of a song like Country Grammar, like I know exactly where I was the first time I heard that song. First time I heard Country Grammar, I lived in Boston. It was on Jammin' 94.5. And I said, holy shit, who is this Nelly? And uh, I'm curious kind of like if I go down a list of songs, like what's the first memory that pops into your mind associated with those songs? Can we go down a few of those? Sure. All right, cool. I mean, let's start with Country Grammar then. 2000. Um, uh, actually, 99, the song. Okay. Actually, 99 was the song, late 99. Uh, it was just uh, amazement, man. You know, uh, excited. You know, you, um, it's, the, it's the doorway. It was kind of like the doorway, the song. And actually... What I would say, too, is persistence, because I had to fight, kick, and scream to get Country Grandma as my first single with my label. Why? Did they want another single? Well, they wanted to go, they wanted to use EI for the first single. Oh. But I, I wanted Country Grammar because it had already meant so much to my city, because Country Grammar was a song that I did for a, a lunatic mixtape, mm -hmm. and it had already had legs in St. Louis and St. Louis, we didn't support anything locally like that. So for us to really be supporting that song, I knew that that song had had a lot of potential to be what it, what it, what it turned out to be. So I really wanted that to represent, uh, you know, Nelly and the St. Lunatics. 
it was Nelly versus the label and Nelly won. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, love it. Well, they probably won a little more than me. <laughs> On the back end, they did. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. yeah. How about uh, Ride With Me? Ride With Me. Uh, just being in my car, man. Actually, Ride With Me came about as an accident because – um, I used to have a tape that my one of my producers made, J.E., who, who, who produced like 70 percent of country grammar. And on the tape, he used ride with me, used to come on after E.I. And, you know, you used to have to rewind the tape <laughs> to get it back. So, you know, when you ride, sometimes when you drive and you don't get a chance to rewind right away. And, and when E.I. would go off, ride with me would come on. And I actually wrote Ride With Me in the car. Like Ride With Me was literally wrote in the car about being in the car and, oh, wow. and, and everything. So I remember listening to it in my Mitsubishi Eclipse, man. <laughs> <laughs> that ugly ass car. Uh, when you think about the Nellyville album that came after that, uh, Hot In Here. I mean, we've, we've talked about this song before. I think you told me one time that this song sounded different when you first came up with it than, it, than what we heard when it came out. Yeah, yeah, definitely did because um, we were trying to work our way around the song a little bit, um, me and Pharrell, because the song was so abstract, so to speak, when you when, when you originally was listening to the beat. Um, but one of my favorite stories is about once we got the hook laid and everything, we were in uh, this place called the Record Plant out here in L.A. And somebody bursts through the door and was like, because we had the music, we had it turned up, we were playing it super loud. And my man Buster bust through the door and was like, oh my God, what is that sound? This is the most ostentatious grandmaster. Jesus Christ, sir. What is that? What is that? Play that again. That's and a good Buster. We played it again. <laughs> and we played it again. And he was like, you're going to have every woman in the world taking off every piece of article that they own, son. This is, <laughs> and I can just remember Buster being as hype as hell and, um, you know, we being excited, but Buster's a great guy, man. I, I love Buster. He doesn't like to be approached in clubs. That's like a notorious thing, but I did get drunk enough to actually approach him one time in a club and I kind of like slid over beside him and I started talking to him, but without looking at him, I was like, I know you don't like to be approached, man, but I just want to tell you, I respect you. I love your music. Thank you so much. And he had this sort of mean mug on his face. He's like, and then all of a sudden he turns to me with that big smile and he's like, I was like, okay, I got away with it. See ya. That was my, that was my buster. What about Dilemma with Kelly, man? That was one of my favorite songs of all time, honestly. Uh, Kelly, man, one of my sister's favorite songs too, as well. Um, may she rest in peace. Um, she, um, she actually called that song and was like, yo, that's going to be huge. She actually loved that song. And it, it was actually one of her ideas to um, try to get Kelly on it to get Kelly rolling on the song. And, um, you know, I, I thought that it was a little different. We actually, you know, the idea was actually maybe to get the whole Destiny Child on it at the time. Oh, wow. But, um, you know, for a lot of reasons that didn't, that didn't go as well. And then my sister was like, well, maybe you could just get Kelly. You know, my, um, we had been on a tour with them and everything. And um, she was like, oh, man, uh, we wound up getting Kelly on it. And it worked out. It was kind of dope. Is there a f bomb in that song that kind of slipped through the cracks that got on like the radio edits of that song? I could have sworn there was like a I ain't fucking yeah. with no game or something like that in the background. Just sort of in the background that I thought hurt slip by no. on that. Maybe I'm mishearing it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You probably All right. heard that one. <laughs> I asked you about that once before, and you said no. And I'm like, you can ask him again and see if the answer changes. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, we're working our way up, man. Air Force Ones. Let's do that, and then I want to get into the new stuff. Uh, Air Force Ones, uh, actually a song that, uh, we came up with, me and the Ticks came up with, we were on tour with somebody and we were working, um, <clears throat> we were actually on tour. I think we were on tour with Cash Money maybe at the time. I think it was Cash Money at the time. And we had, we were listening to beats. I was actually listening to beats for Nellyville because we had just finished the lunatic album. We were on tour doing the lunatic album, I think with cash money. And that's, and that, and I was playing beats in the uh, dressing room and things like that. And that beat come on and, and, you know, we was just talking about sneakers and uh, I think Murph yelled out two per or something like that. And 
we just got the chanting and everything like that. And that song just <laughs> actually came about in the, in the, in the dressing room on tour. That sounds like that was inspired by a little, uh, uh, liquid in a glass or something, man. Nah, <laughs> liquid in a glass, seeds in a wrap, and a lot of other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we know Cruise was a great song, man, and, and now you're back with Florida Georgia Line, and you got this song. So you're going to do a country-inspired album. It's not a, a country album. Country-inspired. Uh, what's yeah. your vision for that? Do you think country will embrace it, or do you think it's going to be like a little Nas X, kind of like we're kind of afraid of it, we don't know what to make of well, it? Well, no, 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 no. Well, um... I mean, congratulations to to everything Nas X accomplished. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everything. I think, yeah. Right. I think mine is a little different um, in a sense of, you know, I've I've been fortunate enough to be embraced since like 2004 in, a, in more of a different way, I would so to speak. Like my whole brand has been about country, whether it was in hip hop or whatever the case may be, even with country grammar, yeah. country that's country that. So... I think it's just a little bit different in the sense of it's um, like what you said. I don't call it a country album. I call it country inspired because I know for a fact that Nelly can't wake up one day and decides he's going to make a country album. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't live a country life every day. I live a hip hop right. life. Hip hop is where I'm born and bred, but what I'm doing is making an album that shows how country music has inspired me, show my love and my appreciation for them supporting me and for the love that they shown me um show how their music over the years has 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 influenced in what i do and like i said again i don't have to sit at the table but the fact that they've allowed me to be in the room yeah. is something that that i'm very appreciative of no more than garth brooks is going to wake up and decide he's going to do a hip-hop album you know what i mean <laughs> like mm -hmm. so i just think from that perspective I think um, when people get a chance to hear it, they'll understand that it's still a Nelly album, but it's definitely, you'll hear the inspiration, you'll hear the country influence, you'll hear it in the music, you'll hear it with, with um, some of the artists that are, that are on there, which we'll get into once we drop it. I'll be able to come back and be able to tell you about that. But yeah. even if you listen to Little Bit, you can hear the Nelly vibe, but you also hear the country-inspired um, Flavor. Mix and max in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The flavor. 100%. When is this uh, dropping? Uh, hopefully by top of summer. Have you got all the songs together? Do you know what's going to go on it? Uh, we're, still, we're still tightening it up right now as we speak. Uh, it's been kind of hard with the COVID thing, just getting around and just yeah. getting it uh, notched on. And I'm a very hands-on person, too. I yeah. hate sending my music off and getting it back. I love to be in there with the with with the artists as we're creating, because I think things go better because you get a chance to feed off like yeah. we did with Little Bit. We we did that together. So, you know, I love to be in there. So, um, but we're trying to work it out. So hopefully the top of something. How many uh, tracks do you have like sitting on the shelf that you're trying to kind of pick and choose which ones you're going to grab? Well, I think we're, it's an EP. It's not actually an album. So we're only going to put like maybe seven, seven songs on it. Um, okay. I'm probably up to about, 15 now but we're trying to hash it down and i'm steady doing more so um but man it's going to be a great it's going to be a great project bro and i and i really can't wait till people get a chance to hear it and hopefully we get a chance to make history again because i think this could definitely be the start of something big and be a bridge and a catalyst for something it sounds like it might be the soundtrack to a lot of people's summer man that's what it sounds yeah. like I hope yeah. so, bro. Looking forward so. to it, man. And I can't wait to see you in person again, man. Thanks Thank for your you, time bro. and your energy and, Thank and you, the Kenneth. music. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I'm going to play a little bit, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Right on. The OHP Uncut Podcast with Cannon.